This is Dr. K. Raghura Mohan Reddy, Associate Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. The course name is Unconventional Machining Process. So, the topic is Question Bank Discussion. Okay. Right. So, here, let us discuss the Question Bank. Okay. Need for Unconventional Machining process okay complex geometries hard materials low tolerance surface finish requirements non contact methods okay right these are the need for unconventional machining process okay so complex geometries conventional machining process may struggle with intricate shapes and geometries that require high precision and delicate operations okay right hard materials some materials such as ceramics composites and super alloys are difficult or impossible to machine with traditional methods due to their hardness and brittleness okay next low tolerance and surface finish requirements when extremely tight tolerances and superior surface finishes are needed unconventional machining methods can offer better results okay next non contact methods for delicate and sensitive materials non contact ma machining process minimizes thermal and mechanical stresses reducing the risk of damage okay so the main aim of unconventional machining process is to machine complex geometries and in order to machine hard and brittle materials we can deploy unconventional machining okay which cannot be solved by the conventional methods like uh, milling turning and uh, drilling machines and low tolerance and surface finish requirements okay and non contact methods usually when we machine for delicate and thin materials definitely there will be a chance of damage when we use conventional methods because of the direct contact okay the internal stresses may be uh, form or may be a direct uh, crack, crack propagation okay but here because of the non contact methods there will not be any chance of thermal and mechanical stresses and the subsequent damage okay right so let us see the overall presentation ones okay characteristics of conventional machining process okay difference between conventional and unconventional machining process in terms of principles types of unconventional machining process based on energy okay uh, mechanism and material removal transfer media and energy source for ultrasonic machining and conventional machining processes unconventional machining processes factors to consider in process selection of unconventional machining process coefficient of magnetostative elongation <coughs> magnetostative elongation factors to consider while selecting a brazier for ultrasonic machining abrasives used in ultrasonic machining process parameters for controlling ultrasonic machining process parameter performance effect of amplitude and frequency of vibration on material removal and surface finishing ultrasonic effect of abrasive grit size on material removal and surface finishing ultrasonic machining basic elements of ultrasonic machining non traditional machining methods industrial need for unconventional machining process agents used in chemical and 
uh, sorry agents used in chemical machining and their characteristics advantages of dual gas and water injected plasma touch h factor in chemical machining and how to control it so these are the various uh, questions involved in the first uh, unit or the basics of the conventional and unconventional machining process okay now let us discuss one by one already we have completed need for unconventional machining process right second one characteristics of unconventional machining processes no physical tool contact high precision wide material applicability energy based low residual stresses okay right no physical tool contact material removal occurs without direct physical contact between tool and the workpiece okay so that there will not be any residual stresses okay high precision capable of achieving tight tolerances and fine surface finishes next wide material applicability effective on hard brittle or difficult to machine materials energy based utilizes various forms of energy such as thermal electrical and chemical to remove material low residual stresses minimize the minimizes the introduction of residual stresses and heat affected jobs okay right differences between conventional and unconventional machining process in terms of principles okay so first one material removal mechanism okay so in conventional uses mechanical energy typically through cutting drilling and grinding in unconventional employs non mechanical energy sources like electrical chemical or thermal energy okay and tool contact in conventional direct physical contact between the tool and the workpiece in unconventional may involve no physical contact or minimal contact okay heat generation often generates significant heat traffic in the workpiece in unconventional can be controlled or minimized depending on the process okay by using dielectric fluid medium okay so that uh, the heat will be minimized okay tool wear tool wear is significant and needs regular replacements in unconventional tool wear is often lower or occurs differently okay types of unconventional machining process based on energy okay based on mechanical energy ultrasonic machining abrasive machining water jet machining okay based on thermal energy edm electrical discharge machining or electro discharge machining lbm laser beam machining ebm electron beam machining based on chemical energy chemical machining ecm electrochemical machining and electrothermal energy plasma arc machine pm ion beam machine okay right mechanism of material removal transfer media and energy source for ultrasonic machining okay in ultrasonic machining material removal mechanism material is removed by microchipping or erosion due to high frequency ultrasonic vibrations of the tool combined with abrasive particles okay about transfer media slurry of abrasive particles suspended in a liquid typically water okay so regarding energy source high frequency ultra ultrasonic vibrations generated by piezoelectric or magnetostructive transducers okay conventional machining process okay by using conventional machining systems we can turn milling drilling grinding boring shaping brushing side okay 
So these are the conventional machining process. Unconventional machining process, ultrasonic machining, abrasive jet machining, water jet machining, electrical discharge machining, laser beam machining, electron beam machining, electrochemical machining, plasma arc machining. Factors to consider in process selection. Material properties, geometric complexity, tolerance and surface finish, production volume, cost, environmental impact. Okay. So factors to consider in process selection based on material properties, hardness, brittleness, conductivity and thermal stability. Okay. So these are the material properties which can be involved in uh, consideration of uh, process selection. Okay. Next, geometric complexity, shape and size of features to be machined, tolerance and surface finish, required dimensional accuracy and surface quality, production volume, batch size and repeatability considerations, okay. Next, cost, tooling costs, operating costs and material costs. Environmental impact, waste disposal, energy consumption and safety concerns. Coefficient of magnetostructive elongation, definition. It is the measure of the change in length per unit length of a material when subjected to a magnetic field used in transducers for generating ultrasonic vibrations in ultrasonic machine. Okay. Materials used for tool holder in ultrasonic machine. Okay. Common materials okay, that can be used for tool holder in ultrasonic machine. Okay. High strength alloys, stainless steel, titanium and tungsten carbide. Right. Materials used for tools in ultrasonic machining process. Okay. Common materials may be again. Okay. This is for tool holders. This is for tool. Okay. Make a note on this. Okay. Everything is same here for the tool holder. This is for just tool. Okay. Common materials tungsten carbide, tool steels, diamond and borer. Carbide. All these are very hardest materials. Okay. Factors to consider while selecting abrasive for ultrasonic machine. Okay. So first consideration is material hardness, shape and size, chemical complexity, availability and cost. Okay. So material hardness, abrasive should be harder than the workpiece. Okay. Regarding shape and size, influences material removal rate and surface finish. Okay. Next, chemical compatibility. Abrasive should not chemically react with the workpiece material. If it reacts, then it will be damaged. Availability and cost. Consider the economic factors of the abrasive material okay so few abrasives may be costlier few abrasives may be low but few abrasives are uh, having balance between the low and high level and when its cost and its properties regard okay abrasives used in ultrasonic machining common abrasives aluminum oxide al 2 silicon carbide sac Borine carbide B4C and diamond test. Okay, so everywhere carbon dioxide is the uh, main uh, abrasive particle. Okay, next volume of material removal in ultrasonic machining as per Schach model. Okay, so as per Schach model, the volume of material removed is proportional to the amplitude and frequency of vibrations, the grid size of the abrasive, and the static load applied okay so based on the grid size 
So based on the amplitude and vibration, or amplitude and frequency of vibrations and the static load applied. So based on this, the material removal is dependent. Okay. Process parameters for controlling ultrasonic machining performance. Amplitude and frequency of vibrations, abrasive grid size, slurry concentration and flow rate, static load, tool material and geometry, workpiece material properties. Okay, so these are the process parameters for controlling ultrasonic machining performance. Okay, amplitude and frequency of vibrations. Abrasive grid size, slurry concentration and flow rate, static load, tool material and geometry, workpiece material and properties. Okay. Effect of amplitude and frequency of vibration on material removal and surface finishing ultrasonic. Okay. In machining, material removal. Okay. Higher amplitude and frequency increase the material removal rate what may cause higher tool wear okay and surface finish lower amplitude and frequency result in finer surface finish but slower material removal okay so obviously this is just like uh, feed rate setup in the lake machine okay if we give low feed rate definitely the surface finish would be better but it takes much time okay suppose for more material removal we have to apply more forces and more depth of cuts more feed rate but obviously we cannot expect the good surface finish okay so similar to that here amplitude and frequency of vibrations will play the same role okay higher amplitude and frequency increases the material removal but uh, it causes the higher tool wear. Similarly, if we want good uh, surface finish, lower amplitude and frequency, we have to maintain. But the thing is that slower material removal, that implies it takes much time. Okay. Effect of abrasive grid size on material removal and surface finish in ultrasonic machine. About material removal, larger grid size increases material removal rate, but reduces surface finish quality. And second one, surface finish. Smaller grid size provides a smoother surface finish with lower material removal rates. That's what we have discussed. Okay. So obviously, grid size will play predominant role. Okay. So larger grid size, that means coarse grid size, it affects badly on the uh, surface finish quality. But in order to have good surface finish quality, we have to maintain smaller grid size abrasive particles okay next effect of static load on material removal and surface finish in ultrasonic machine about material removal okay higher static load increases material removal but may cause tool damage or excessive weight okay so for everything there will be some plus and there will be some minus okay so higher static load increases the material removal but causes damage of Two or X wave. Okay, so we have to have a balance between the these two. Okay, we have to select optimum systems. Okay, that means we have to set a good static load and grid size. Okay, and amplitude and frequency. Okay, next surface finish. Too high static load can degrade surface finish due to Increase abrasive embedding and tool wear. Okay. Basic elements of ultrasonic machining. Transducer converts electrical energy into mechanical vibrations. Tool holder transmits vibrations from the transducer to the tool. Okay. Next tool imparts vibrations to the abrasive particles for material removal. Abrasive slurry carries abrasives to the machining zone. Workpiece 
material to be machined. Okay, so these are the basic elements of ultrasonic machining. Next effect of right non traditional machining methods examples ultrasonic machining electrical discharge machining laser beam machining water jet machining right industrial need for unconventional machining processes complex part manufacturing material challenges high precision innovation and r and d complex part manufacturing to produce complex high precision components for industries like aerospace medical and electronics material challenges to machine difficult materials like composites ceramics and super alloys high precision required for micro machining intricate geometries and superior surface finishes okay next innovation and r and d necessary for developing new products and technologies with the demanding specifications okay etchants used in chemical machining and their characteristics okay ferric chloride fe cl3 commonly used for etching copper and its alloys is a strong oxidizing agent and provides relatively uniform etching rate okay next hydrochloric acid hcl used for etching aluminum and its alloys it's aggressive and can quickly remove material but requires careful handling due to its corrosive nature nitric acid hno3 Typically used for stainless steel and titanium, it offers a controlled etching rate, but must be handled with caution due to its reactivity. Okay. Next, sodium hydroxide (NaOH) used for etching aluminium. It's highly reactive and offers rapid material removal, but can leave rough surfaces. Next, ammonium <coughs> persulfate. Ammonium persulfate. Okay, used for etching copper in printed circuit boards (PCBs). It offers controlled etching with minimal undercutting. Right. Advantages of dual gas and water injected plasma torch. Okay, dual gas torch. Water injected plasma torch. Okay, dual gas torch. Increased control allows better control over the plasma arc characteristics, leading to more precise machining. Okay, next improved cut quality reduces the width of the kerf and improves the overall cut quality. Okay, regarding versatility, suitable for Cutting a wide range of materials by adjusting gas types and flow rates. Okay, next water injected plasma touch. Cooling effect. Water injection cools the workpiece, reducing thermal distortion. Enhanced arc stability. Water stabilizes the arc, leading to a smoother cut. Environmental benefits reduces the amount of fumes and noise generated during the process. Okay, right. H factor in chemical machining and how to control it. H factor, the ratio of the depth of H to the lateral undercut during chemical machining. Okay. Next, control methods, musket quality, etchant concentration, etching time, and agitation. Okay, right. Let us see musket quality. Use high quality musket that resists undercutting. Okay, 
and h concentration optimize the concentration to balance between the h depth and undercutting okay etching time control the etching time to avoid excessive lateral etching okay next agitation proper agitation of the etchant can lead to more uniform etching and reduce the undercutting okay so with this uh, let us conclude this presentation thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates